So welcome to the next episode on licenses and copyright. This time we have a guest because we're going to talk about patents. Uh, so welcome, Mirko. Yeah, yeah. welcome. Thanks um, for inviting me. Thanks for coming. So yeah, you, you've specialized a bit in, in open source and uh, licensing and patents and how all of that connects together. And every time we bring it up, we, says, we say we, we need a lawyer. And I guess you're not a lawyer, but you still know these things. <laughs> Yeah. So if you're um, not a lawyer, what are you then? <laughs> I'm by training. I'm an economist by trade. I'm a software engineer. So I, I I'm a free software contributor for more than twenty years. Um, mm -hmm. And it, it just so happened over time, I um, specialized more and more in um, both copyright licensing and also patent licensing in relation to to free and open source software. Yeah, so should we dig into the topic? So, so in general, what, patents seem like almost an aspect to uh, to copyright, so to speak, something on the side. So how does it all hang together or how does it all connect? Yeah, I think one thing that's interesting is that some people seem to think that copyright and patents, they're actually quite close to each other. You know, one is for code and creative things and then the other one is for inventions. But um, and that's technically true. I mean, the, the two instruments, one covers the creative work of, of humans, and we consider software, writing software as creative work. And so software authors gain copyright in their work. Um, and the other one, patents, they cover industrially applicable inventions, right? Um, and that sounds very similar. It's just maybe different instruments for, for um, related ideas. Um, but there are some quite essential differences between patents and copyright. First of all, um, copyright covers the creative expression that, that, for example, that we pour into our code when we write it, which means the code actually needs to exist. And um, patents, in comparison, cover um, the functionality idea of a functionality in, in their claims. Um, and, and that means the actual implementation doesn't necessarily have to exist. And um, the way the claims are written, they can they can describe future implementations, even if the people that implemented the idea didn't even know that a patent existed. Um, that translates into uh, differences in the development process as well. So, for example, um, when you consider a typical open source community process, then we would assume that the work is done transparently in the open, um, all the changes are constantly published to some publicly available repository by different participants. Everything builds on the work of the other person the day before. It's very incremental. Uh, and, and because it's all made public, everything pr practically becomes prior art immediately. So that it becomes publicly known immediately. And if you, in comparison, imagine a, the process of inventing something that should be patented, then basically you have to do this in your lab under non-disclosure agreements and behind closed doors until you can file a patent application. And um, these two processes, they are they're very different in philosophy. Right? One is like transparent and open from the start. One is keep it close and, and, and hidden and secret until you, uh, the, the invention is ready. And that's one reason why um, free software communities and uh, inventors that intend to patent, they don't really mix very well. Like the processes are so different and so um, uh, kind of contradictory in their approaches that there's practically no, no way to combine these two things. And that means that especially communities don't necessarily see a, little, a lot of use in the idea of patenting. Um, for them, it's mostly a nuisance. And I think this is one of the reasons why um, there's a very long-standing uh, kind of antipathy between um, the patent community and the, the free and open software community. Could you perhaps quickly just explain what the basic idea behind patents is? Because we covered copyright already, mm -hmm. where it came from and what's, what's the idea is behind it but for patents i don't think uh, everybody is kind of on the same page yet okay um i think patent the idea of patents represents the the kind of the mindset of the industrial revolution right 
right? So um, imagine the, the brilliant inventor working in their, um, uh, in their workshop, creating an improved machine, machinery, something, for example, uh, a combustion engine that saves 20% of the fuel, 20% more efficient. Um, and the question was, how can this inventor um, go to, say, a large manufacturer and, and say, can you make this invention available to everybody? And I just want to have a small share of the revenue because I invented, I invested into it. And uh, that's how the patent system is supposed to work. So um, the idea is that the inventor can file for a patent application as soon as the application is filed, assuming the patent is eventually granted. Um, the, 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 there's a protection of this invention that the inventor made. And uh, that can become the basis of, for example, a, a contract between the inventor and the manufacturer. Mm -hmm. and, and in the context of industrial inventions, this has worked okay well, right? So it's um, uh, because, for example, you don't invent something like that overnight. And uh, also you don't necessarily like bounce ideas of other colleagues uh, because you just work in your, in your workshop. Mm -hmm. And... Um, in, in many industries, this concept has worked for quite a while and has worked pretty well, especially everything that has to do with manufacturing, with uh, machining, with industrial um, production. The basic process is very simple. You invent something, it has to fulfill the requirements to get a patent from the patent office. Then you have to file an application. That's different from copyright. You have to actively file and, and get a patent. And the patent office will actually check if what you have created is... Um, inventive and if so it will grant you a patent and from that moment on for about 20 years um, you have protection of this idea okay so protection means that you can uh, force someone to pay to use your idea or something like that well it's, it's like, that's actually quite similar to copyright so once you have like the patent has been granted um Others need your permission to use that idea, right? Similar to when we say, mm -hmm. when you want to use somebody's code, you need a license from that person. You similarly need a license for the patent once the patent is granted. I see. Okay. Okay. To, to f like uh, make invention, uh, like uh, investing in inventions more lucrative or so people would actually do it. Yes, That's, exactly. Uh, so the idea okay. of the patent system is to encourage innovativeness. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's uh, that's a good uh, summary, I guess, uh, <laughs> of the background. So now we, we can, I guess, we can go back to the where we were before. <laughs> yes, so, so I mean, we we've discussed the various licenses before in in this series, and and uh, some of the licenses we've mentioned do have patent clauses. Mm -hmm. uh, how how do they work? And 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 why are they good or why are they bad if they are? Um, so, as you say, um, open source licenses may contain clauses that um, also regulate how patents are licensed in, con uh, in relation to the software that's licensed under the, um, under the open source license. And um, there are three basic groups, I think. It's probably simplification, but um, there are those licenses that don't mention patents at all. Uh, many of them are the classical licenses like MIT. Um, however, that doesn't say that they don't say anything about patents. Um, so, for example, if you uh, look at the MIT license, it says that it grants permission free of charge to any person to deal with the software without restriction, including uh, using it, changing it, redistributing, etc. And depending on your perspective, if you hold a patent or not, when you write the software and you distribute it, uh, this can be interpreted as you are, of course, granting a license to all the patents you hold that are related to the software, or you don't. Um, so licenses that don't mention patents often have something that's called like an implied or implicit patent license. And this is a bit misleading because with, with regard to this like permission to use somebody's work, you either have a license or you don't, right? Which means that you end up in a situation where whether or not this includes a license, uh, a patent license, um, may depend on jurisdiction in a specific case. Um, there's a lot of uncertainty basically involved. Uh, and this is still an open debate. So even in, in 2019, I know that uh, knowledgeable people have argued whether or not the MIT license includes 
a patent license. So, mm -hmm. and this is, that means it goes, it goes on for at least two decades, right? Um, then we have pat licenses that includes, uh, that include explicit patent uh, clauses. So for example, the Apache 2 license or modern versions of the GPL. And they usually say that um, if, if I distribute the software under these, this license, then I also grant the recipient a license to all the patents that I hold that are relevant for the implementation in the software. So imagine um, I'm a manufacturer of um, batteries and I distribute code for managing the charging of batteries. And in this regard, my patent portfolio would be licensed. But it's quite limited because these grants only cover um, the functionality in my contributions. So if I hold patents that are completely unrelated to what I contribute as code, then um, these licenses don't co cover that. Also, the, uh, these grants do not cover li uh, patents that other people may hold. And this is a quite typical situation in, in patenting is that there's one entity inventing and holding the patents, and then there's a whole community out there implementing functionality that's related to it. Uh, and the third group is, um, uh, th these are partially overlapping, but the, the third concept here is retaliation in a way that um, when you, um, you distribute software, for example, under the um, MPL2, the Mozilla Public License, then um, you lose the right to use the software if you initially initiate a patent litigation. So the, the first two groups were mostly giving you permission, and the last perspective is you're removing the permission to use the code if somebody tries to enforce patent licenses. Um, but I think the key issue here is always, you, know, you can't really um, implement anything in, in software licenses that is that are, it's more about than about the software itself. So the patent grants only cover patents that are related to the, co the code that you contribute, and you cannot imply third parties. So um, in general, patent clauses and in, in, in free software licenses are a good thing because they create clarity, but they don't solve the problem fully because, for example, you can't imply a third party that holds a patent. And, and it doesn't imply any, any liability then either. So if, if I were to use something that you created and distributed to me under an open source license and a third party would hold a patent to what you created that's still my problem as exactly as yeah. yeah um so maybe i don't, don't want to phrase this like too uh pessimistically for example if i'm a, a major industrial company and i hold a patent portfolio and i contribute code to uh, free software projects under the apache 2 license that's a good thing because what i'm doing is i'm communicating i come in peace Right. I come, I'm communicating you don't have to worry about me enforcing my patents against you as the user of the software because I have contributed to this under license that includes an explicit patent grant. So if there's ever a patent that covers in my portfolio that covers my code, feel free to use it. But it only solves a fraction of the problem. And I don't think it's a big fraction. So what Johan was saying was basically if, if I write code um, that someone else has a patent on the idea and I don't know about the patent, I will still I will still be in trouble, right? So I'm supposed to know about the patents or... Yes, that's de definitely a problem. And um, that's actually a complex problem because in, in today's world, there are very many patents um, held by all over the world. The patent system works internationally. Um, and as the manufacturer of a product that you bring into the market, you're always supposed to know whether or not you're infringing on somebody's patents and um, doing such uh, patent searches or, or investigations is quite difficult. Hmm. Um, it requires expert judgment and a lot of knowledge and uh, usually it's quite costly as well. That brings us to the end of this episode. Thank you very much for listening and thank you very much Mirko for, for joining us. Uh, we will continue talking to Mirko next week. So um, subscribe, like and Listen to us next week. Enjoy.